did you miss me strangers um i know i've been so bad recently i have not posted a video onto this channel since before i went to disney world which is ridiculous because obviously i intended on keeping up with it whilst i was out there um i'm not sure if you knew but i also had a blog that was working in conjunction with um this channel and um i did actually manage to keep up my blog posts over there so if you wanted to head over there then please just click on the link in the description bar below um and you should be able to see that um but again i stopped about halfway through um my kind of disney journey because things were just so crazy there was too much going on um and it was just impractical really to be able to be stopping and when i was enjoying myself just to write about how much i was enjoying myself um and on the days when i wasn't enjoying myself so much i didn't want to be writing about it because i kind of at the time i didn't want to um my judgment to be clouded with like disappointment or anger or upset or anything like that so I thought I would leave it until I got back before um, I did a kind of reflection on how everything went um obviously I did get back in August and it's now January um but things have been really busy and to be honest I'm glad that I have left this time in the middle because I it's given me more benefit of hindsight so that I can like deliver proper information to you guys like um, concerning you know what happened out there um, and what my experience was like so um, I'm not really sure where to start um, but I am going to be posting more videos um, more frequently on this channel um, I'm going to kind of do a bit of a review of how everything went for me um, perhaps I'll kind of focus it around the three like elements of the Disney College program as identified by Disney which I think is living, learning and earning. Um, but then on top of that there's also the fun element to which they don't actually include in those in those three. Um, but yeah so I think I'm going to do that and then also if you have any questions to ask I will be posting up a frequently asked questions video um, relatively soon just with regards to the practicalities of the experience. Um, so let me just give you a quick overview of everything that happened while I was out there just so you up to speed before I post my next video in a few days time. So um, I went out to Disney World on I think it was the 19th of June or the 18th of June um, and I'm not sure if you remember but I, I think I posted on I mentioned it in, a, in my last video I think or I mentioned it in one of my blogs um, I'd actually lost a vital um, USA immigration document which they'd specifically told us all do not lose this um, and somehow I managed to loop, misplace it and moving out from university last year I believe that I'd left it in the envelope that it came in um, and because the papers like that kind of tissue paper I think that I must have picked up the envelope and thought oh this is empty and just thrown it out um, and I realised that the day before which was actually the day that I was going to the airport, um, the day before my flight, because I was going to be staying at a, I stayed at a hotel with um, Louise and Emma, two of my friends at the time, um, and so I found, I realised that I'd lost that, and I had a massive nervous breakdown. I thought I wasn't going to be able to go. I was thinking, what am I going to do with my summer if I'm not going to Disney World? And it was crazy, but. Um, it was particularly difficult because I think it was a weekend, if I remember correctly, I think it was a Saturday, and um, almost every number that I'd been given to call didn't work, like it didn't go through. Um, and then finally I found one that was for Disney, Disney's immigration like department, um, and the lady was really nice and she was like, look, don't panic, it's not a problem, you can still come out here, like, just mention it at the airport before you come. Um, to Disney World so they can like call ahead for you and then um, just just deal with it in immigration when you get here like it won't be a problem we'll just apply for a new one for you it will be free you won't have to pay for it and I just thought oh my god thank god for that because they'd said to us that another one of the documents if we lost it it was going to cost us like 300 and something dollars and I was just like oh my god I cannot like <laughs> is that where my first paycheck from Disney is going to go it's going to go on this stupid document that I've lost 
Um, so yeah, that's I guess that's my first tip to everyone. Do not lose that document because um, even though she said that to me and I kind of relaxed a bit, it's just one of those worries that you ha that you have that you could really avoid having um, if you just kept an eye on all your stuff. Like um, I'm really I'm still surprised that it happened to me because I'm really organised when it comes to like special papers. Like I've never lost my passport. I've never lost any money or my phone or my driver's license nothing like that um and so but it did happen to me so that provided more problems at immigration when I got there um I must have spent about four hours in immigration and in the United States when all my friends were kind of in and out within about two um so that meant that obviously I had to get my um I had to get the Mears shuttle which Disney recommends from the airport to um, Vista Way, which is where you kind of check in, kind of thing. Um, I had to get that with some strangers who were also on the program. They were from France. They were really nice. I got on really well with them. But um, like I say, it meant that all my friends had gone on because I I'd said to them like, you know, don't wait for me um, because I could be here forever. It also meant that by the time I got to the luggage carousel, all my luggage wasn't there anymore because there'd been like three other flights that had come in on that carousel since my flight and so I had I had a massive panic trying to find my cases um, and luckily finally someone, um, she was called, I think she was called Mary, Mary Smith or something really like, really nondescript like that, um, who worked for British Airways was so good to me, she, because um, my phone wasn't working either so um, I, she let me come in, use her phone, she tracked down, that was in the, their special office, she let me use her phone, um, she tracked down my cases for me, she saw me to the place where my, um, my cab was going to be going from and everything, she was such a good Samaritan and I really wanted to catch up with her when I left but it just, it just was the last thing on my mind really when I was leaving. Um, but yeah, so that was kind of a bit of a rough start to the trip. Um, but it was fine, so I ended up getting to the housing complex, um, obviously I settled into my housing which I lived at Chatham Square with all my friends which was really lucky because even though we didn't arrive together we still managed to get to live in the same um, complex which was really cool. Um, I, had a one, I had a one bedroom flat so I only had one other um, like roommate. Um, she was really nice, she was called Harry and I, she was from Wales and I did actually, I had met her before, I would met her at the interviews. Um, and we got on really well to be honest. There was a couple of like little hiccups here and there, but nothing major at all by any stretch of the imagination. Um, and so that was all good. Um, then I found out that we had like an initiation, like, well not initiation, like an orientation meeting. Um, and it was there that I found out I would be working at Hollywood Studios. Um, so I was really excited and then there was another, um, it was called On With The Show which was our first training at Hollywood Studios and I found out I would be working on an icon attraction which if you remember I loved, I love The Great Movie Ride and that was my number one dream attraction to work on um, and that was an icon attraction so I was kind of, I was getting a bit excited you know because I'd sent off a letter requesting that if they could put me there um, to please put me on um, the great movie ride so I was kind of I was like not wanting to allow myself to get excited about it because for just in case um, but I was kind of like come on this is going to be good hopefully I'm going to get an eye contraction I'm going to get a great movie ride and then I found out that I was going to be working on Star Tours which is a great attraction it's a fantastic attraction like it's one that me and my family we never ever ever miss it when we go to Hollywood Studios um, and it's, it's been updated since the last time I was there massively. There are now like, I think, I don't remember, I used to tell people every day, there are 64 different combinations of the ride that you can go on um, or something like that. Because they change the projection now that, um, that the audience sees because it's like a 3D, it's a 3D ride now, which is really cool. Um, and the projection changes, so you go to different planets now, like some people will go to Tatooine, others will go to Naboo or whatever. Um, and then you'll either get like Yoda or Princess Leia or some other guy. And it's, this is the thing is that I hardly know anything about Star Wars. Um, and so it was quite disappointing to me that like I'd, um, like I have a real passion about the Great Movie Ride and I thought my talents would be really well suited to that. 
um, and yet I've been put on star tours where I just I didn't feel challenged and I didn't feel stimulated or interested um, in what I was doing and that was a big problem for me oh yeah and you can also be, have just like the stormtroopers or you can have Darth Vader at the beginning um, of the ride but anyway so uh, yeah I got star tours and I was a bit disappointed at the beginning but I was going to give it a go um, and I gave it a good go I did tr I did try to get in touch with someone to ask if I could be transferred to the great movie ride but um, it's kind of I've said it before I think that Disney will put you where they need you at the end of the day and so they didn't need people on the great movie ride and I could I respected that you know I worked I worked out they don't need people there they need people at Star Tours um, they desperately needed people at Star Tours because something I've realized while I was out there is that the Americans work so hard in that kind of job in that kind of like I mentioned on I oh, know that was on a different bit of video for my other channel but um, like it's not the kind of job where it's a career necessarily it's it's more like a like it's the kind of job that someone could do part-time or seasonal do you know what I mean so um but I've never seen people work that hard in like a shop or a theme park or in a restaurant in England for that many hours there was um one guy who's like 60 years old or something and he was working like 60 plus hours a week um and that was just absolutely outrageous to me. I've never seen and I've never seen that before. But I guess that that's the problem is that Star Tours was so short staffed that they needed us virtually every hour of the day. I worked a sixty hour week. I worked a fourteen or sixteen hour shift. I don't remember. I think I start. I think it was a sixteen hour shift on the fourth of July. Um, I, one time I finished work at two o'clock in the morning and they brought me back into work at seven o'clock the next that morning as well so i got like with getting the bus back to um chatham and then getting back in the morning i had five hours in my apartment that night um like three of which i slept and then obviously i had to eat at some stage i had to shower and do all that so they'd work you really hard if they if they need you they will work you so hard there so be prepared for that because I was I knew I was going to have to work hard and I've never had a problem with working hard last year I worked four jobs at university um and I didn't have a problem with that but this is like excessive amount of work that they may require of you um anyway so that was I was working there and I realized that then I broke my finger at work my pinky finger I'm not sure if you can still see is fractured um that was because i was moving a big heavy metal cart that they required us to move um that was full of 3d glasses and um they have them sorts of wheels where a bit like a shopping trolley where they're really um crazy and they can you can lose control of them and um you have to take this trolley past uh through a tiny tiny corridor type gap where there are also guests there so um so if so if the trolley is going to go towards the wall then it's better to go towards the wall and crush your finger than into one of the guests who could sue Disney World um, and that's what happened to me so my finger actually broke um, <clears throat> and it's like scarred for life basically like it's never going to get any better than that that's like swelling to the nth degree um, so because of that I had to go on some medication I was taken to the Disney kind of Disney hospital um, and they put me on tramadol and ibuprofen in massive amounts which made me really drowsy that was a side effect of them the first time that I took them uh, I had to then go back to Star Tours to collect my bags um, and I've, I've never been high before but like if that's what it feels like I never want to be high because I literally I could not my legs were like jelly I couldn't feel my fingers like they were tingling um I was nauseous uh I was tired like my manager he even kept me in that he was like oh you should stay stay here for like a little while you're not going home on the bus like because you need to eat something we need to see that you're going to be okay and then one of my um coordinators actually gave me a ride home after he'd finished his shift um but yeah it was really heavy duty medication I'm just going to roll this over onto another video because I'm approaching my limit so see you then